few of them up to the web and uh, if you want any more we can put some more up there but this should hold you over for now. So here I'm going to walk you through my solution to the first problem on virus dynamics and it's uh, a problem I've adopted from the book Virus Dynamics and it's a simple uh, three equation model for virus infection and uh, we've got three ODEs dx dt, dy dt, and dv dt and you could solve this without really much context in, context in just a, a purely mathematical way but to help you along uh, just to give you some insight into what we're actually solving x stands for healthy cells y stands for infected cells and v stands for uh, free virus and so I, I give you what all these parameters lambda d and beta and a k and u are uh, basically their cell replenishment rates, their cell death rates, and then their reaction rate constants for when you have a healthy cell that meets a free virus and then turns into an infected cell. Uh, I give you parameter values to use and I tell you that you can assume that the units work out uh, so that this the time is in the order or is in the units of days. And so if we look at the system that we're solving, there's a few questions just to kind of get your head right around this. Uh, is it a lumped or distributed system? Well, it's a lumped system. Uh, it's not distributed because we don't know or we don't care necessarily where these cells are spatially. Uh, what, we concern, what we're concerned about is that there is a certain number of healthy cells and they change as a function of time, but we don't necessarily care where they are. Uh, is it linear or nonlinear system? Well, it's a nonlinear system. If you look at equation one, you've got this term x times v. And in equation two, you have that same x times v. x and v are both unknowns in the, the system of equations. And so when you have the product of two unknowns, that's what makes it a nonlinear system. And as written, is this steady state or dynamic? Well, as written, it has these dv dt, dy dt, uh, dx dt. That makes it a dynamic system. But the first thing I asked you to do is turn it into a steady state system and give me the steady state solution. So how would we do that? Well, it's it's simple. We have time derivatives and at steady state, uh, the time derivatives are all zero. The, the solution doesn't depend on time anymore. So if we just set dx dt equal to zero, dy dt equal to zero, and dv dt equal to zero, then we have the steady state system. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to solve this and I'm going to write uh, some virus driver script and so we're calling this virus driver and I'm writing it as a function because we're going to use sub functions here instead of having a bunch of different functions uh, I'm going to have them all in one m file and um, since this is a driver uh, I'm just going to use some some commands to clear out the script uh, the workspace and things like that before but what we're going to do is we're going to use fsolve to solve the steady state problem and I'm not uh, I'm not going to go through the help documentation for fsolve because by this point you've seen it uh, a bunch of times but I am just going to copy and paste their syntax and that gives us a good starting point so anytime you you have a problem the, the easiest thing to do is just start with what you know and so uh, the first thing that we know we know the uh, we know the values of these parameters. So let's just plug those in and that gives us something to start from. So A equals 0 0.5, beta equals 2e minus 7. All right, so now we have all of our parameters um, down and ready to go. So if we look at the syntax for fsolve, there's some output x, uh, some function that it's gonna call to solve and then some initial guess to solve it. And I'm going to rename these uh, so that way we have something a little bit more appropriate. Uh, this is the steady state solution. This is going to be some function, but we don't want to just give it the generic name function. So let's call it um, virus steady state. And this is the initial guess, which uh, is going to be a, a three by one vector or uh, sorry, a one by three vector. And I'm gonna leave that blank for now. We can plug these in later, the initial guess. But let's go ahead and write this 
virus subfunction. So now this is going to have an input. It's going to, to try to solve using fsolve. fsolve is going to need it to calculate the right hand side of the equations. And there is going to be some output that fsolve requires. I'm going to call that f. And if we look at f is just going to be, if there's, uh, so there's going to be three inputs here in this initial condition, or this yeah, initial guess uh, vector. And that's going to come in at first as var, the variables. And that means this is going to be 3 by 1, um, or 1 by 3. And then that means f is going to have three entries also. So I know I need to write this out this way. Uh, before we go any further, though, it, it's easier to deal with the variables that are in the equation. Um, so I'm going to do what's called unpacking. And this is just going to unpack these variables from var into the variables that show up in our equation x, y, and v. So down here with f1, f2, and f3, uh, before I would have had to have written this out uh, every time an x showed up, I would have had to write this as var1 or var2, uh, var3. Uh, and it's just easier to write these equations in the way that they show up. And so now I'm just going to write the equations beta x v. And so this is just much simpler, easier to look at, and it's easier to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes when we compare them to the actual equations that were written. So now we have these, uh, these three equations, and we also have um, one, one problem that I noticed right off the bat. Since these are all sub-functions, uh, we have all these parameters defined, but we have them defined up in the calling function. Uh, so right now they're not visible to any of the, uh, the other sub-functions. So I'm just going to declare them as global. And then if we do the same thing, take this same line, and we put it inside the function that it's calling, um, it, it'll be fine. It should be able to see them now. And so now we just need to go back up here and give it some initial guess to start from. So this is just an initial guess based on the initial conditions. Um, so I don't necessarily know what happens, but I'd imagine that um, we're going to lose some healthy cells from where we started, we're going to gain some infected cells from where we started, and we're going to have a whole lot of free virus. I don't know necessarily what how much, but that's just a good starting point guess. Um, so if we run this now, hopefully we can keep our fingers crossed, and of course we get an error. And okay, we see that var is undefined, and that's happening inside the, uh, the function that fsolve is calling. And what that usually means is that means that fsolve doesn't know what variable it's supposed to be solving for. Um, so if we use this syntax where we say at var, and then we tell, uh, we tell fsolve that virus ss is taking the input of variable. Hopefully that works. And so it runs through with no problems, but uh, we didn't declare any output for this virus driver function. Um, and so it, it doesn't actually show us that anything was solved. Uh, it just prints the screen that fsolve completed its job, but it doesn't tell us any of the solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some string that we'll print to the screen. Um, so this is just going to be something that's going to show up on the screen. Uh, so we'll have a, a healthy cell count. We'll have an infected cell count. And we'll have a free virus count. And now if we take a look at what this actually means, uh, sprintf is just going to create this, this string for us. So it, this is all just regular text, at steady state colon. Then this backslash n tells sprintf to start a new line. Then we've got some more text. This percent f means that we're going to have some number in there, a floating point number, 
that's uh, going to be given to us by a variable. Then we skip another line, we have some more text, we have another variable, we skip another line, more text, uh, have another variable, and we skip another line. But now we need to tell sprintf what those variables are. And those are just going to be our solution values. So ssol1 is the healthy cells, which corresponds to this first percent %f. The second percent %f is our ssol2, which is our infected cells. And then our free virus is this third percent %f, which is ssol3. So now we have this string. We just need to tell MATLAB to print the string to the screen for us. And if we run this, we should be OK. And sure enough, so uh, this is all just from fsolve telling us that it completed its job. And we look at what our screen, uh, our sprintf prints out to the screen, our steady state values. And our healthy cell count is 125,000. Our infected cell count is 175,000. And it looks like our virus count is 3.5 million. So I'll let you guys play around with parameters on that. Um, but now if we take a look at the dynamics of the problem, uh, so this is a, a transient model, a uh, dynamic model. So if we want to solve the dynamics of this and see how it reaches those steady state values, um, we could use ODE45 for that. So again, I'm just going to look up the syntax for ODE45, and I'm going to copy it directly from there. And so within this same driver function, we can call ODE45. And if we look at line 20, where ODE45 is being called, we have some time output vector, uh, some solution output matrix. In this case, uh, we're going to have three variables that we're tracking over each time step. Uh, we'll have some function that ODE45 is going to use to call, uh, is going to call to solve the, the equations. And we'll have some time vector that we're solving over. And we have some initial conditions. So uh, I'm actually going to work my way backwards here. And first I'll define the initial conditions. And I give you these initial conditions. Um, so this is just plugging in these initial conditions from the, the problem description. You have 10 to E5, uh, 10 E5 healthy cells. You have 10 unhealthy cells, infected cells. And then you have 10 free virus. Um, and so the next thing you need is this time span vector and I've told you before that time is now in terms of it's in units of days so we'll start from zero we'll go in increments of 0.1 days and we'll go to 30 days we'll see what happens after a month uh, now this ODE fun um, again I'm not going to give it a generic name like ODE fun um, but we'll call it virus ODE. And so that means we need to write another function. And the beauty about the way we've done this is that we've already written the right-hand sides of this equation. Uh, so I can actually take this steady state solution that we used for fsolve and I can copy that and paste it. Um, but we have changed our output from f to g. So I changed these to be consistent. Uh, but we have the right-hand side of all these equations already, uh, so why not just use them again? The difference between this virus ODE and this virus steady state function is that ODE45 needs some time input, whereas FSOLV didn't need a time because it was solving it as a steady state problem. Uh, but so if we have uh, everything defined now, let's go ahead and run this. And of course, again, we get another error. And it's again that the variable var is undefined and I believe because we're using a sub function we just need to give it this syntax where we put the at symbol in front of the ODE function and maybe it wasn't that ah it's a different error so virus ODE must return a column vector um, right now these are probably row vectors and so now we have a solution and it runs all the way through uh, but again it's a subfunction, so we don't have the, uh, the access to it. But let's just go ahead and plot the solution now. Uh, and I've asked you in the, the problem statement 
to plot them as a three by one subplot. Um, so I'm going to go over the syntax of how to do that. So first we create a new figure. Um, we have a, a subplot and as a three by one subplot this means there's going to be um, three rows, one column, and then this is the identifier for which plot we're going to use. So this is going to be the first plot. And just to make it easier to visualize, I'm going to plot them using a log scale on the y-axis because we're going to have uh, large changes in numbers, orders of magnitude changes, so it's just easier to plot them that way. And so first we're going to plot the healthy cells, which is the first column of uh, row one, or sorry, the, the first column of Y out. And let's just give this a label. So that way we know what we're looking at. This is the healthy cell count. Uh, then we move on to the next subplot, which again, there's three rows. There's one column. But now we're talking about plot number two, which is going to be the middle plot. And again, we're going to use a semi-log plot on the y-axis. Uh, now we're going to plot the second column of y out, which is our solution from ODE 45. Now this is the infected cell count. And then we can go on to our third plot. Again, there's three rows, one column, plot number three now, semi-log y, t out, and this is the third output, which is free virus count. Um, and if we put a, uh, an X label at the bottom of this, it'll help us know time is in terms of days. So now it looks like we, we have our solution and we're going to plot it and see what happens. And so yeah, there we get our uh, we get our solution now. So if we look at the uh, the free virus at first, the healthy cell count we start out at some initial value, it dips down, and then it reaches what should be the same thing as our steady state value. Uh, so if we look, our steady state solution that we got was uh, 125,000, and sure enough, that's right about where we end up here. Uh, again this infected cell count matches our steady state solution and this free virus count matches our uh, I guess this is around three uh, three million or so what we what we'd expect from our steady state solution so uh, now the the nice thing is we can see how we got from these initial conditions to the steady state so we're actually plotting the dynamics of it and so uh, I'll let you guys play around with changing the parameters and seeing how that affects the solutions. But uh, that's it for the, uh, the solution to the virus dynamics problem. Hope this helps, and uh, thanks again for checking it out.